it's very important that we discern the movements of God. It's very important that we stay in tandem with his motions. When God is doing something and you are doing something else, you are already out of it. Alignment in this kingdom is more precious than faith. Your ability to know what God is doing and just tag along. When the pillar of fire moves, Israel is supposed to take breath. If the cloud advance, if you are left behind, you are in danger. Your security is your ability to follow the motion of the pillar or the cloud. And so in a morning like this, when a strong grace to expose light rests upon a place, it's an indication that God wants to use light to liberate his people. I will be foolish to do anything outside this particular initiative. When the Spirit invites you, your only response is to yield. And so tonight, I would like to begin by establishing why, why are we gathered here? It's a very important question to be answered. It was Miles Muro that said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Many of us have all kinds of reasons why we converge from, you know, the canal, the canal reasons to come and show yourself. Some people only come so that they will not say they didn't come. So that nobody will come and visit them and say, we have not seen you in church for two weeks. Some people come because they carry this whole setting to be a platform of networking so that they can get the contacts of one or two persons. As noble as all of these other ideas are, it is not the reason. Why are we gathered? To look into the reason for our convergence, we would need to contemplate on some ancient matters. The first thing I would like to share with us very quickly, and one of the things God will do for us this morning, you will see an unusual move of restoration. Everything lost. Ah. That thing that you think was lost is still around. It's just not with you. Restoration brings it from wherever it is and forces it back to your life. Restoration is a reality in God. Restoration communicates the mercy of God. If anything will leave your life, there are legal sites around it. There are court cases that the spirits that defrauded you won. And he uses it as a legal ground to take what is yours. And the Bible says when the thief is caught... He is made to return sevenfold that which was stolen. I am bringing a word to somebody here this morning. As the light of God unveils the wickedness of darkness, you will find out that more than that which you lost, sevenfold is what God brings back for you. Why are we gathered? Why are we here? We are here because God is trying to use his sovereign mercy and his grace to do something for us that we don't deserve again. Once upon a time, man was designed to interact with life. And so among many trees that were captured in the Garden of Eden, there were two trees that have the stature to stay at the center of the garden. One of which is the tree of knowledge first. Before you talk about evil, is the tree of the knowledge. Then you talk about good. Good even came first before evil. So basically, the tree is the tree of knowledge. There's another tree. Okay, for those who don't want to admit the things we have just shared, is the tree of knowledge basically. But every knowledge have good side and bad side. So for instance, that knowledge of biology that you got. It's a very good knowledge. Very fantastic knowledge. However, it is that knowledge that enables the motion of the spirit of infirmity. Anytime you know, you just feel one small pain around your joints. Body temperature rises a bit. Huh? Ah, now say, okay, this can be this can be salmonella typhi. Mind you, a madman has been living outside on the street since January. You, you have a house. All the rain that fell in this year fell on top of his head. He ate from the dustbin. He drank water from the gutter. Eh? You and him, you are not in the same realm. <laughs> you, 
somehow you have found yourself this year in the hospital helpless with drip nobody fixed any drip for him he's still moving you and him don't operate from the same place there is something about his reality that has altered his nature physically I am I'm trying to share why are we seated here it's, it's God that is trying to help us there is something we don't deserve that he's trying to do for us there is a tree that competes violently with the tree of life and that is what that metaphor meant when he says both of them were at the center the center is not middle the center means the focal point of attention if you enter the garden the two things that will catch your attention quickly are those two civilizations two economies there's an economy of knowledge there's another economy of life in the economy of knowledge you will find that there was a governor of that economy it's only Ezekiel that will help us understand why all this story is necessary. Lucifer. Translated basically, it means light bearer. What is knowledge? Knowledge is light. Adam is not the only occupant of the garden. In fact, the first occupant of the garden is Lucifer. Ezekiel again told you, Thou were in Eden in the day that thou were created. Every precious stone was thy covering. <laughs> Satan is the first occupant of Eden. So, if you want to know why, you will find out if Satan is the enemy of God, how did the enemy of God sneak into the garden of God and not come and corrupt? It's because they, are, they, they were, they were flatmates. They were sharing habitation. Yeah. This for this creature called man, the tree of knowledge was reserved for this creature called Lucifer because he, he will only communicate with God through lights. God will not have relationship with him. God will not show him his nature. He will only know God to as much as God wants to reveal. And this is the zenith of angels. Angels don't know God. They only know about God. And so the best the tree of life can afford the dispensation of angels is that they will get all kinds of fractions of knowledge about God. But when they behold this creature, they say, who is man that you are mindful of him? Why did you create another arrangement? How, how can you make man have access to you like this? Mind you, there are three habitations. There is the physical world, there is the spiritual world and then there is the secret place. <laughs> God does not stay in the spiritual world because he created it. And before he created it, he was somewhere. <laughs> in the light that he was already somewhere before he created the spirit world. And he created all the angels that tabernacles in that spirit world. So before he started anything, he, he was somewhere. And when he created man, he did not invite man to the spirit world. The herbalists can go to the spirit world and concoct things. Witches can set their conference in the spirit world. So you can be lying down with your husband and think both of you are on the same bed. He is in a conference. The spirit world. When, when a witch say we shall see, they will not touch you. They go to a world. They go and alter things from somewhere. Then they leave you. You without understanding will say, I want to go to the police station. Let it be known that on the 12th of January, this woman warned me. Anything that happened to me, catch the day something will happen to you, they will, they will say she was in church by that time. They will not link both of you. <laughs> the realm where they taught you from is a realm where only thrones operate. And if you are not alive in that realm, you will be a victim. But God did not invite man to the world of spirit. He extended an invitation to man to join him in a place where no angel has ever seen. So he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. The reason why they use that adjective most high, there are higher realms, there are depths, but there is a place that is the zenith of height. 
He called man, enter there with me. He didn't invite man to come and visit. He called man, come and live here with me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that in the day where angels want to give their best submission about God, from the closest rank to the throne, which are the seraphs and the cherubs, the best you will hear from them is that God is a bright light. But unfortunately, there are people here who are living in the physical world. So they are carnal men. They didn't even, they, they did not even step into the world of spirit, let alone the secret place. And so any day, any witch say, we shall see. Your own has finished. Because where you live, you are accessible. Uh, but some of us, we are hid in Christ and Christ in God. Before anything taught you, there are two security protocols that must be broken. You must be able to bully Jesus. Hmm? Because God hid you inside Jesus. Before anything touches you, the thing must touch Jesus. And then God took Jesus and hid him inside himself. So before anything will now touch the Jesus, it must touch God. At the end of the day, the difference between believers is the level of light that you have. The people will perish now not because of the wickedness of Satan, but because of lack of knowledge. And any time God begins to furnish his people with knowledge, is let me not run ahead of myself. You see, the things I'm sharing with you now, some of you might be so wild. I'm saying, wow, mysteries. It's no mystery. It's life that I'm sharing with you. The thing that enters you. Huh? In, in, the, in the center of that garden, there's a tree of knowledge. There's a tree of life. God gave instruction to man. Do not partake of the tree of knowledge. Satan, who was his flatmate, said, forget it. I've been eating of this thing for a long time. Eat it and see. You won't, you won't see anything. In fact, one of the first windows Satan explored was when exaggeration was introduced to the instruction of God. The instruction God gave was, do not eat of these three. When Satan came to ask Eve, her response was, God say we should not eat and we should not touch. But God never added touch. God never added touch. That thing you, you added is where you will fall from. That area that you, you are the one that use your own inspiration. You know, somebody said something somewhere. He said, do you know why they don't play music in the saloon where women make their hair? He said, so that gossip can be sweet. There is need for the atmosphere to be rife. How can you drown our conversation with a loud music? So when you give a woman something, you say, look, this is what this person said. Don't tell anybody. When she wants to narrate that thing, she will need to put it in the way that you understand that this thing is not a joke. So when Eve wanted to tell Satan what God said that she heard from her husband, Say God says we should not eat it and we should not even touch it. But touch was not part of the instruction. So one of the first things, in my opinion, Satan advanced with. He did like this. I touch him. <laughs> Nothing happened to him. She must say, ah, it's true. From that, from that small thing that you added, ah, just tell the person by your side, don't add anything. You see, this gospel is complete in itself. Don't, don't try. Don't help God. God don't need your help. The last man that tried to help God, he died at the spot. The ark, the ark was about to fall like this. Obviously, this ark needs help. And a man said, how can I be here and God's word will not fall? As he touched it, he died. This is how good men die. Good men don't die because of disobedience. They die because they broke out of alignment. The temptation of a good man is a good thing. There are many of you here, your temptation will never be stealing, fighting. God has helped you from all these things. 
you will use a good intention to want to do a good thing. But then they will check, they will check those scrolls. It's not in the ordinance of God. That's how good men die. So in the light of this particular truth that man was designed to feast on the tree of life. But then he partook of the tree of knowledge. And then suddenly you find that God out of mercy. Sending man out of the garden is not punishment. Sending man out of the garden is mercy. I will tell you why. Even after the reason is that they didn't want man to go and partake of the tree of life after he has eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil after he has fallen. Let me buttress my point with one story. I was minding my business, living my life, glorifying God. Somebody sent me a small WhatsApp video. And the video just showed a serpent, a snake inside somebody's shoe, that crevice of the shoe. And the person was now videoing like this and saying something in the background. My people, let's be careful. See what is happening in the world now. You know, I, as I saw it, it just looked like, wow, it's, it's, it's a normal helpful video. Ah, but every knowledge I told you has good and the bad side. Suddenly, I just realized from that day, even the shoes I kept on my wardrobe, the top of part, when I carry it subconsciously, unplanned, I will find myself doing it like this. One day, I caught myself doing this and now arrested myself. I said, what is happening? Then I now knew it was one knowledge. I was never living like that before. There was something that came like a good warning that also impacted fear upon my life. Oh, there are things you are conscious of now that it was not in the program of God that you will ever know it. I told you a madman is not in the same realm with you. There are things he's oblivious. He does not know it, so it's not real. <laughs> Before anything enter your life, it must enter your mind. It is as he thinks in his mind, so he is. And so the route to adjust the reality of a man is that realities must crystallize in his heart. What happens to a man when his mind is no longer open to all of these suggestions? He will become, he will live only for the reality he knows. Ah. Uh, that this is the summary of the scripture. Let this mind be in you. There is a mind that only knows what God said. That's all it knows. You know you now, you, you go around by yourself, tempting Satan. You just wake up, put your leg on the ground. You felt a shocking sensation, which is normal because so probably you folded your leg while you were sleeping. The next thing a carnal believer goes to do he goes and type online. What does it mean to have shock on your leg? Then the devil was waiting for you on the other side. He gives you a very, a very strange name of disease. Say this is one of the signs and the symptom of early paralysis. And the, you know what Satan has done? He had planted paralysis in your mind. It will just be a matter of time before what is in your mind enter your body. Anything that enters your mind must enter your body. It's just a matter of time. When they came to how war are waged, they say, guard your heart with all diligence because out of that is the issue of life. Anything Satan cannot put in your mind cannot enter your life. The tree of the knowledge huh, of good and evil, when man fell, it means he does not have the capacity to partake of life in that fallen state. So they put cherubs to guard the tree and flaming swords of fire. So the reason for pushing him out of the garden is to help him not to eat of the tree of life and remain in this state forever. So they wanted to make the possibility of redemption open. So they pushed him from that which has the capacity of keeping a man in whatever form it met him. Man was in God, living righteous, so he was eating life, eating life. But if he fell and he now added that fall with life, life will crystallize that state that it met him inside. And he will, he will, he will, the fall cannot be blotted out again. Life will permanent it. And so they say, please stay outside of this place briefly. What were they walking? From that day, 
they began to manipulate the scale so that God can enter time and help man back to eat life. You say that God was angry. I will show you that he was not angry. You will find that Cain and Abel suddenly have unusual insights as to how to connect with God again. Suddenly, man devised a technology that can open a portal in the heaven. They found out that if an altar is, a, it is, is built in the earth, a portal will respond to it. The next thing you'll be hearing is that Abel was offering a sacrifice. Cain offering a sacrifice. Who were they offering the sacrifice to? The same God you think was angry. He had taught man how to still connect from a fallen state. Formerly, you don't need an altar because you are the altar. But now, Satan has corrupted the scale. So God said, let me teach you another way that we can continue to be talking. So he showed them the technology of altar. I'm giving you the history of prayer. That's where prayer started from. When Seth was born, you will hear the scripture says, and men began to call upon, began. That's when prayer started. There are people still doubting. So you will find that God and Cain were talking the way a man and his friend would talk. There's, there is no enmity there. God was asking Cain, where is your brother? Cain talked to God as though he's his guy. He said, am I, am I my brother's keeper? You know how you respond to a question with a question? You only do that to somebody that you are, you are, you are familiar with. Not an authority you will be fidgeting. Oh, Cain, God threw a question to Cain. Cain threw another question to God. Yeah. Since when this one start? Am I the one that, 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 that watches him for you? Ah, relationship was intact. It was love that was following man. Any, anywhere man fell into, love will, will make himself smaller and come to meet him in that place. Man fell, God reduced himself. Oh. I'm, you see, this thing I'm sharing with you, it's life. I'll tell you how it's life. I, I'm trying to establish why we are gathered. And so, you will then find out as soon as man fell, his nature was altered. He no longer has the capacity to partake of life. So what God did, God looked at what man has eaten. Man has eaten from the tree of knowledge which was light because knowledge is light. Please if you are with me say amen. amen. So God looked at what man has eaten and what he has been reduced to. So God took a very dangerous project of breaking down life into light. For those of you who didn't miss your chemistry class, there's something called conversion huh? amen so God broke down life into a form that this fallen state can relate to it that is the meaning of the scripture in John chapter 1 in him was life but that life will be transferred to men as light so the life is the light of men actually what he is giving you is life but you cannot digest life so he will convert life into light and give you light. As that light enters your spirit, there is something he left in the technology of your spirit that has the capacity to reconvert light back into life. So the entrance of thy word, which is light, give it life and understanding unto the simple. Listen, wait, 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 wait. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead. You are dead. What you are looking for is life. But he says, Christ shall give thee light. Because you don't have capacity to eat life. They must break down life into light. Then give you light. As it enters you, your spirit reconverts it back to life. So the word that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. Anytime we gather in church like this, is because we want to eat life. You would think it's, it's not Rema. It, somebody will get up from here and you will forget that there was a challenge you were worried about. It, it left when life entered. Ah, God cannot help you outside his word again. The word of God contains everything about God. And so if God wants to give you any portion of life, he will refer you to light. Because at this falling state, all you can relate with is light.
Now I want to share something with, with especially some people here who come to church from January to December. No transformation. Nothing. They are before God and they didn't know. Every time this scripture is open, that's your deliverance. The average Christian thinks that his deliverance is in some you know, mystical thing that happened. Oh. I found out that kings, kings are attracted to light. The Bible says, Gentiles will come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. They know, they know that they, they, have, they have diviners, they have enchanters, they have stargazers. They know that the only way to assess any commodity from God is that light must be given to a man on that matter. Mind you, light is specific in operation. You cannot, you cannot have general light. You may have light as touching prosperity and be bankrupt of light as touching health. And so, light is not general. There can be other areas of your life where darkness is still a shadow around. And so, you only have light in the area that light has come for you. This morning, like I said, there will be an avalanche of restoration. Everything lost will be found. Wherever you are, please bow your head. I have probably 25 to 30 minutes for us to establish something. Now you know why we are here. So you are going to tell God, use your light and change my life. Transform me with your light. Transform my life with your light. Transform this destiny. It's the greater, the greater life conference. And the theme is the emergence of world changers. There's only one way to this theme. And those are the matters we will contemplate on this morning. But by all means, please prepare your heart. Lord, change my life with your light. I wish you were praying. Condition your heart. Condition your heart to be ready to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. In the next 20 minutes, I will share on our team the emergence of world changers. And I trust the Lord that it will be for us, you know, a quantum leap. Everybody is born to be great. Everybody has a dimension of God wheeled unto them from the studios of eternity but not everybody end up great. Everybody has something that God gave only them. There is something about God that he willed to everybody. The elders have been staying from the realm of eternity, lifting up their head, beholding God, and shouting holy repeatedly. Because every time they lift up their head, they see something new about God. And that new thing compels them to worship so if people in eternity eternity that, that is aeons of billions of years in every second that are seeing new things ah, everybody here has something about God but not everybody at the end of their life will become a witness to that dimension of God that is furnished on our inside and so a subject as kairos as this the emergence of world changes it is an attempt of the spirit to enable you overcome the thing that makes others to enter this side of the divide and get lost forever. Mind you, you will be judged at the end of your life not based on what you have done because nobody will reward you for doing work. You will be rewarded for doing the will of he that sent you. 
if you do anything outside the will. So there is something ordained for you. The first question man should have answered is what? But man will not. The first thing that burdens man from how perfect the cosmos and the system of the cosmos has been designed, they begin to impregnate your mind with all kinds of knowledge aside the knowledge of the Holy One. From ABC to 1, 2, 3, then they put primary science on, on it, they put biology on it, eventually they begin to put, you know, all kinds of higher learnings on it. You will be a, a great creature of knowledge, but you lack the knowledge of God. And so you will discover yourself quite all right, but you only discovered yourself in the world. And your true identity is only found when you discover yourself in Christ. It is only when a man be in Christ, that's when he becomes that new creature that God intends. There is a version that God intends that this particular person will bring my counsel to pass. You will only find that person when you enter God. The emergence of world changes. There is something I know. Something I'm persuaded about. When the rat race starts in life, people will begin to run from pillar to post. In fact, they, they begin to mentor kids from small. There is a competitive spirit. Even the academic system, they have grades. They have positions. And so, everybody is striving from birth. You don't even know yet that it is the culture of strife that is, that is mastering the soul first. You will live like that throughout your days and not realize that you are only a victim. You are a puppet under the inspiration of many strange spirits. You will compete with your fellow men and your competition is not men. The Bible says, and them comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. <laughs> the Bible didn't say we shall wrestle. It said we wrestle. That is, the war was already on ground before you, you were born. So you, you, you just, you just become, become violent quickly. You don't need to provoke something before the, your side of the battle comes for you. We wrestle. And they told you who your enemy is. It's not flesh and blood. So your weapon cannot be carnal. Since it's not flesh and blood you are fighting. How do you fight a prince whose habitation is in the second heavens? How do you combat a creature that does not live with men? If you are not a winged creature, you can't talk. If you, if, if you are shouting too much, the prince will say, if you want to fight, ascend. You know where wickedness are concocted? The Bible says wickedness in high places. If you don't have height, if you cannot journey far enough, you can't touch where your affliction is coming from. What you will be treating throughout your life is symptom. And, and symptom cannot cure it. One of the symptoms of malaria is headache. If you are taking Panadol for headache, you have not dealt with the malaria itself. So you will continue to treat headache for the rest of your life. The day you want to fight malaria, you must go to the source of malaria. In the day you want to uproot wickedness, you will go to high places. Ah, the Bible says, them that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. Ah, from here to Ghana, I have gone to Ghana both by road. I have done the journey from Ghana to Nigeria by road and by air. From here to Ghana by air, from Abuja to Ghana is 45 minutes. If you go by road, you will spend two days. So, so the man, uh, mind you, we don't transport in destiny by the same medium. There are those who are flying in destiny. There are those who are walking in destiny. Those who are flying, they will arrive Ghana 45 minutes. They have... While you, you are still trying to understand whether kidnappers are around Abuja side. You know where roadblock is? Roadblock is only on the road. There's no roadblock in the air. Any man who flies, nothing stops you there. Men don't want to fly. You have your wing. Ah, we are talking about the emergence of world changers. Before God will make you a world changer, there must be some. I will add a truth. You can never be a deliverance to a generation that mentored you. So if God will make you a sign or become any way a help to a generation, 
God must at some point isolate you from that civilization. Your own education will be different from the thing they, they know. The place where that lecture holds is called wilderness. Wilderness. It's the wilderness nobody likes. The place where the lecture, <laughs> the lecture that is different from the education of our generation, God will tell you things alien to your timeline. Ah, and during that lecture, you will find out that you are alone. No friends. This is how world changers are trained. The wilderness. Inside the wilderness, that is where you find out that the more you are obeying God, the more things are spoiling in your life. And you will now start looking at all the people who are compromising and are doing well. Oh, you now start thinking, this God is a disadvantage. It is in the wilderness that because of holiness, holiness will attract attack to you. So because of how upright you are living, creatures will start discussing about you in heaven. So have you seen my servant Job? Instead of reward for holiness, affliction, battles. Satan will say, is it not because you have, you have decorated his life, given him everything and fortified him? You have built a, a, an edge around him. Before God will say, touch, Satan will move. To tell you that Satan has a plan for everybody from day one. It didn't take Satan five minutes to know what he wants to do to Job. The first thing he did, he cemented him with wound. So all the part of his body was wounds. If you are standing, you are standing on wound. So if you are standing, you are on pain. Serious pain. If you lie down, you are on wound. You'll be crying. If you put your chest down, you are on wound. So the inspiration that thought of this kind of evil, he must have premeditated it for a long time. So when he hit him with physical pain, he changed the pain into emotional pain. So while you are in physical pain, he began to touch all the things that Job liked. Killed his children. So they brought the news from the field and said, your kids were partying and the roof fell and killed them all. So this kind of pain is not physical again. It's, have, you, have you been through a heartbreak before? There's one pain you feel in this side. You, it's hot, it's warm somehow. <laughs> it's pain. After that physical pain, Satan brought that other layer of pain. So that one, while you are in physical pain, there's something else tormenting you from the inside. So outside and inside, all ran. Pain. Then he now came near his wife. After so much pain, all his friends that were his best clique, they now came together and say, such fate does not befall righteous men. They say, Look, we are together. We did together. Just tell us your secret lifestyle. Just tell us. This thing is only, is only evil men that this thing happened to. It is because of such accusation that God compelled them to go and apologize to Job. The way of a world changer. You will not change anything until God change you. And you cannot change any system until God gives you a customized education. Something that is not available to, to, to the open. Ah, when you know it, it is that thing you'll be fetching. There's a well. When, have you seen when they dig well? Every strike that the, the digger hits the ground, it's cracking the ground. The ground is going through pain. But that same thing that is happening to it is about to give it the capacity to become a center of attention for men. Because anytime a well is dug, men must gather in that place. When Jesus begins to dig you, oh, you would think that you would think that God is a disadvantage. <laughs> I found out that the righteous don't die. You see. You see that pain you had? Huh? That body weakness. That shortness of breath. I don't know what the symptom, whatever it is. Eh? That sickness has not legitimately gained access to your body as at that time. The time when you actually fell was when your mouth finally partnered with what the spirits were trying to give you, ah, the just. There's a way the just live. The weak say that they are strong. The scripture says, let the weak say, 
I am strong. So although the sign is in your body, God says don't use your mouth to say it. It is when your mouth said it, it's that time it became official. You know what Satan will do? He will start putting some behavior in your, in your child. So your, your child will start acting funny. They are all waiting by your mouth. They want a prophecy to leave your lip. What kind of stubborn child is this? Ah, thank you. We have it now. It came from a she that bore him. The Bible says every eye do what? There's, there's nothing that leaves your mouth that is a mistake. You cannot say unto the angel, it's a, it's a mistake. Because as it leaves, they go and enforce it. You know where that business failed from? It didn't fail the day your contractors pulled out. It failed the day you described what has happened. When men are saying there's a casting down. You, the, this is the way of what changes. Mind you, I have given you a little history into how what changes are built. God must train them in the wilderness. In that day of the wilderness, your mouth must be silent like Job. Be careful. They accused him. He didn't know what to tell them. He didn't have any response to them. What Satan did, he showed us one of the most powerful immortal truths. Came through his significant order. He said, cause God and die. Know the truth in that scripture. It means the wound, the sickness, the infirmity, as deadly as they were, didn't have the capacity to kill Job. Job's death was tied to the utterance that leaves his mouth. Jesus could not die on that cross until his mouth says, Father, into thy hand, I commit my spirit. So some people are doubting me. When he resurrected, he came back and said, my life was not taken. I laid it down. No man took it from me. I was the one that by myself gave it to the Father. That sickness cannot kill you. In fact, the sickness is in your body illegally. And so Satan is banking on that illegality, hoping that you will never know the truth. But thou shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You see, there are people who are already in the school of world changers, and they don't know. So they think it's a disadvantage. In this school, you can withdraw by yourself. It will, just, it will just be in your final year. Then you now say, I give up. Ah, the angels will say, no. Haba, you are almost there. I will not share any story of myself. <laughs> but Jesus dug a well in me. And those who live around me, they know. My life is an open book. You can see the transition. You can see the low points. You can see the exalting hand of God. There is no joke around it. The way of world changes is the part of the wilderness. The wilderness is not a palatable place. It is in the wilderness God will begin to give you a customized lecture. Oh, in Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 6, you will hear a strange scripture. When you are through from the wilderness, the Bible says in Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 6, he says, who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like a pillar of smoke with fragrance of frankincense and the power of merchants? This is what a man that graduated from wilderness, this is what he comes out with. He comes out in the visage of a pillar of smoke. Number two, he comes out with fragrance of frankincense. Number three, he comes out with the power of merchants. You know the things they showed? They showed you the power to get wealth. It's inside the wilderness class. That's where the power of merchants. Ah, I wish they displayed that scripture. You, you would have seen that what you are looking for is in the wilderness. Mind you, from Egypt, the prosperity gospel said, Egypt to Cana. Ah, but nothing can be further from the truth. From Egypt is wilderness. They didn't tell you, but I know that he must have told us. From Egypt is wilderness. The wilderness will remove the taste of cucumber and garlic from you. <laughs> wilderness. The wilderness is your door to Canaan. Mind you, the wilderness is supposed to be 40 days. But if you are stubborn inside the wilderness, you will spend 40 years. 
And your stubbornness will not change God's mind. Your stubbornness will only elongate your time. I want to advise world changers today. Don't see. Stay under the mighty hand of God. Don't, don't resist him. I may not understand what I'm going through, Lord, but I choose to trust you. This were my most popular prayer from 2009 to 2017. I may not understand, but I trust you. I trust you. I will wake up some morning. No, I said I will not share anything about myself. <laughs> there are people here, I'm telling you, you, your eye, your eye can, and I'll tell you how your eye see. You know, there's a way, there's a way you just wake up someday with a knowing. Hmm? You just know that things are about to change. Hmm. Things are about to change. There are people who are with you, they think you are, to, you are not together. <laughs> your, your feet have, you have almost completed your program in the wilderness. It is in the wilderness that God gives you the power to get wealth. If they don't give you that power, wealth will corrupt you. So it takes power to stand where mammon stand and not be defied. It takes power to be in control of so much resources and tendencies will not come out. There are many people looking humble, sitting quiet here. They are only humble because of poverty. Ah, you know their true color when their substance increase. There are people you don't know their working step yet. Their real working step is inside that bank. When the bank account grow, you, you will know. How many men are currently staying at home, faithful? The day they became adulterous was when God increased their substance. When you find that the blessing of God now corrupted a man, it's because he didn't go through wilderness. It is in the wilderness you learn to abase and you learn to abound. You learn to be stable in little and in many. Then God can commit anything to you. It cannot change you. The hair as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, although he is Lord of all. There are many things that are your own, but God cannot give you yet because there are many tendencies just waiting for the right atmosphere to express itself. God is more interested in your eternal security than that your brief cry of my bank account. So when he sees that multiplying your substance will ultimately mean your eternal doom, his only product of mercy towards you will be to stretch your capacity, to give you the ability to hold wealth and not be changed. And the only way that is done is the wilderness. That is where your husband will be talking anyhow, with misbehaving. And God will say, pray for him. You know where men carry their anointing from? Wilderness. There is no man that is anointed anywhere outside the wilderness. What was Jesus doing in the wilderness? The Bible says he returned from the wilderness in the power of the Holy Ghost. What was John doing in the wilderness? The Bible says he was in the wilderness until the season of his appearing. <laughs> what was Elijah doing in the wilderness? They told you, see, there's something in my heart that is not interested in encouraging anybody this morning. <laughs> You know, there's so much en encouragement. Just say, don't worry, you shall be well. Yes. Don't, the, the, the leave that is this today, tomorrow, all kinds of African problems. I saw something that made me laugh. So somebody's, somebody sent a write-up, said, today, no motivation for you. Today, I said, today I won't motivate you. If you like, give up, and your body will tell you. You know? You know, some of you, you are just, you are all over the place just telling people, my sister, if you know what I'm going through, Kai, it's just that I don't like talking about, well, you are talking about it. Stop seeking sympathy from men. At best, they archive those things you tell them and use it against you tomorrow. The wilderness. You will stay like this. God is dealing with your appetite dealing with your tendencies, dealing with your pro proclivities, all the hidden things. Huh? That is where they will teach you how to tame the appetites that destroyed your ancestors. You find out that your father, father's father, all of them have several wives. Now in your members, you can see the tendency. 
you are married, but your neck turns every time a damsel pass. Ah, there's something. Maybe the reason why you are still calm in the house is because you don't have the kind of money. There's a difference between overcoming temptation and escaping temptation. And when God wants to help you, you will make sure that you don't, let's not, let's not even give it to him. Have you seen a, a child that is crying for a car before? You'll be crying for a car. And the father knows that this car will destroy him. He doesn't have the capacity to operate with it. This is how most of our prayer points sound in the heavens. You are asking for things that when they look at you, you don't have capacity to wield it. Have you seen something in your friend's phone before? Maybe a video. You want to collect it. Then your phone now told you, memory not sufficient. Eh? What your phone told you is, Oga, eh? <laughs> you don't have capacity. Eh, you, you, your friend said, take. That is, the, the source say it's your own. Take. The only challenge in this case now is you, you don't have capacity to touch it. Ah, the challenge is not God. In fact, God came one day and said, I've been hearing too many prayers that is making me look bad. Let me clarify the air today. He says, you men, as evil as you are, you can give good gifts to your children. How much more me, your heavenly father? Because he saw that people think that they need to cry and roll on the ground so that God can look at them. And the real stumbling block is lack of capacity. Jesus says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. And so for the sake of that inability to bear them, we will put it on a hold. You know the way of a world changer is the way of capacity. You know how you build capacity? You go through the dealing of God without complaining. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. People say, ah, madam, this thing, the way it's going like this, we saw, don't see, in the day of the wilderness, close your ears to what your friends come to tell you. It is in the wilderness that they say, they say to Job, righteous men don't experience this kind of things. I heard of a woman who died somewhere around, I think, the south. She died chasing her husband. Chasing her husband in a car. The guy, the guy was speeding. She, a, a friend called her and said, we sighted Oga with a slave queen around so so, so mall. She said, where are they now like this? They say, they, they just did, they come out for the mall gate. So she entered the car and zoomed quickly. You know what she died for? She died for nothing. Mind you, that slave queen and the ogre will continue. <laughs> There's one woman that don't like me there. There's the way she's looking at me. <laughs> Have you been blessed this morning? There are two ways God brings deliverance to people. There are two ways God brings intervention. There are two ways that God brings impactation. There is the way of the anointing. And the believers love it. They love oil. They love fire. I, I, in fact, I love that so much because when I go to youth meetings, I go around campuses, all we do is fire because they are young. They like, they like energy. When you come before elders, you stay with light. The way of that fire. Eh? Anytime the anointing breaks the yoke, it comes with a condition. The condition is be careful. Do not go back to your old ways, lest a more terrible fate will befall you. That is what they are, when the anointing brings deliverance. That deliverance is tied to a condition that if you are not careful, something more terrible than what you are delivered from can come. Because the spirit that was resisted by the anointing goes around in dry regions and tells himself, I will go back to my house. But there's a second platform of deliverance. It's called the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth does not set you free. It makes you free. The anointing can make you free. Or rather, the anointing can set you free. The truth will make you free. When you handle the truth, you will now know the legal ground why what you are asking for is already your own 
The anointing, you will not know why you are healed. In the truth, you will see that a price has been paid and it is illegal now for sickness to be in my body. So on the strength of the illegality of this arrangement, I declare illness leaves me now. Both people will be healed. But one person's healing is permanent because it is a truth that enforced it. Another one did not have any knowledge of why it happened. They just say, oh, holy, I don't know. What I know is once I was blind, but now I see. What God brings for us this morning is truth. Truth. You just know. What God has done for many people, he has calmed them down. They are agitated. Go through this wilderness. There is no glory without this story. You must go through it. How do you help? How do you contribute? How do you deliver when you don't have anything above what the person suffering is going through? And so the day that they want to will something to you, they will give you a training that is not the norm of your generation. That's what many of us are going through. As I conclude, you will never heal anybody. The healing anointing will never be entrusted to you until God gives you a little taste of what you will help others from. I know too many candidates that are being trained. I know your mission field when I see what God has taken you through. That's a most accurate way to predict what God has in stock for you. There are women here with ministries. You will heal many marriages. And what Jesus is doing to you is giving you a taste. One day, somebody will come and be talking and you will say, I understand. I understand. That, that I understand is, is, is five years of pain just as you say I understand and let me tell you one thing eh? anything you have gone through as you come out from it the spirit world give you a certificate to have the capacity to change that thing in any other person's life because upon your body is a scar is a wound that is an attestation that this thing you are not just talking about it you are the lab rat that went through it oh, you will see a healing apostle he will be born as a sick child. You will see all kinds of infirmity. A man who has never gone through sickness, he will walk and pass the sick like this because he does not know their pain. Ah, when you, when you want to pass, you will now remember those days when you were in the hospital for three months. Lonely. Nobody checked on you. You will now imagine what this one is going through. Suddenly from that place, when you say, in the name of Jesus, you know what the spirit of infirmity had? He heard the voice of one of his prisoners many years ago. And he never remembered when he set you free. So he knew you broke out by prison break. It's violence that broke you out. The devil never plans to release anybody. If anybody ever becomes free, it's violence. Violence. <laughs> you will see a poor man like this and you will give them 1,000 Naira and say be blessed. Because of what you have gone through, your utterance is strong. Anything that leaves your mouth is not utterance again. Because the attestation of the fact that you have graduated from that experience, it becomes for you the ability to close that chapter from others. Brother, sister, hear my voice. Go through the wilderness. It's the only way for glory. Go through the wilderness. You will sit down like this, it will look like it's not working. Nothing is working. As far as you are in consecration, remain there. Keep pressing. You pray the first night, the issue now became worse. As though the prayer now make the matter worse. Ah, don't stop that prayer. In fact, one of the signs to know that your spiritual enterprise beginning to draw results is that you must have shakings and agitations. Tomorrow night, start on that same time again. Stay here. The next day, your landlord comes and gives you a quick notice. Leave. Leave this place. <laughs> you know what you do? <laughs> Third night, don't stop. Go there again. You know the people that win cases in the courts of spirits? Yeah. Consistent men. The king will say, I'm too busy. Then they will tell, they will tell him that the widow is here again. The widow has come again. The widow has come again. The widow has come again. You say this woman will weary me. Let me just settle her once and for all. Consistency. 
people who never take no for an answer God is quiet I continue let me tell you one truth there is there's, there's nothing outside this thing we are talking about if you pray and you didn't see a result pray again you pray and prayer did not shift it add more prayer <laughs> the only way in this thing is to increase the quantity you pray 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 you see that the thing add, add more you, you pray for three days it didn't work turn the prayer to one week there is a way you, 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 you insist you insist I have seen a mystery in this world that Satan can settle with a man. There's a way you are too violent. They say, what is, what is his problem again, please? And they say, quickly, give, give her. I've, I've seen that Satan can say, let's have peace, please. Why, why is he praying like this? Then they say, it was that day that his final result came out. Huh? Result? So what is it? They say he's, he's vowing that he will not fail in life. I refuse to fail. I talk up a man. They say, please look for a job around CBN quickly. What about that NMPC job? <laughs> you know what they want? They want that. They want to test whether your prayer is need-based. Ah, and many people die in that season. You will know when Satan that gave you when your prayer life died the day the blessing came. They exchange priesthood for prayer. Rather, priesthood for material thing. They say, give us your altar. Take this one. Go rest, rest. Ah, the way of the man who is a word changer. As that thing enter your hand, that is when your prayer increases. <laughs> you have been praying vigorously. Now God has settled you in marriage. You now, you now tie rapper and carry the TV remote. African magic. You don't know. You don't know anything. It is now that the volume of prayer should increase. As you enter the home, then you begin to establish territory first. Like a lioness, you are roaring. You set a boundary where Satan should not be able to enter. You can touch anywhere, but you see this space? Don't come near it. Fire. But people... People just do small things, then they rest. And the average Christian is looking for a victim that he can dump his prayer request on. People call me by 3 a.m. and say, ah, Apostle, are you, are you sleeping? I say, really? <laughs> really? You, you were sleeping. You now had a nightmare that woke you up. You are now questioning why I'm sleeping. Um, I, I was. I, I just want to share something quickly so that I will not forget. I said, oh, "Can't it wait till tomorrow?" He said, "There's the way that I was eating. Somebody now carried the meat." I said, "What is this? What is this? You don't want to grow. There's a way you groan. You groan. You groan. You groan. When you do it to an extent, your your body will now align with it. You you will find yourself blasting in tongues when you are not conscious." You will be washing plate. Apakatopema, vetrokos of inadaba. They ask, "What are you asking for?" You in that realm, your prayer point is not request again. <laughs> you are like a generator that is just warming up. <laughs> One day you will become old. In your old age, you will not pray much again. You will have bank of prayer, the prayers of your youth. They will be fetching from it to do intervention. One of your child will want to be wayward. They will use prayer and correct his head. There's prayer, investment in prayer. You know what you should be doing now? Pray, pray. If you wake up, remember, pray. Ah, sometimes I'll be doing something, I'll forget that I've missed prayer for like 20 minutes. No prayer point in this season. Just be praying, just be praying, just be, just be praying. Just be praying. Let's sit and say, But what now? Pray, pray without ceasing. One day you will realize that everything you have done, the prayer of the saints, the Bible says, was stored in revelations, was stored in a veil. That everything that left your mouth didn't fall to the ground. It's just that you did not see the result yet, but there was a bank of prayer. One day, one witch that has tormented others will make the mistake and meander towards you. Ah, that is when they will know. Suffered none to do them harm. 
he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed to my prophets no harm i can tell you one truth there are literal no go areas for satan it's true he will play with everything but he cannot play there it's a ground of fire you don't know where the serpent is hiding in your family until you turn that house to an altar then you will see that the serpent cannot stay inside fire 